What's good, peeps? What is good? Um, let me quickly open up all the pages and then we can start talking about some boxing. I actually don't know what we're going to talk about today. I have, um, I have no agenda. I just wanted to talk. That's it. I just wanted to talk. So I thought, you know what? We're just going to talk about anything that we can, that we can find or anything that pops up for about 35, 40 minutes. Why not? I'm not doing anything. It's late. And um, if I don't film, sorry, if I don't film today, then I don't know when I'm going to film next. So let's just, um, let's just see what we can talk about. Ah, uh, did you guys see my um, flop on Sky Sports? Oh, painful, painful. Is that still hot? It is. Um, yeah, <laughs> you just got to own it, right? Just own it. I'm sure that most of you guys have seen it. I think it's been seen by like four or five hundred thousand people on Twitter. So basically, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, um, I was on Sky doing the transfer show and I was talking about um, Osmane Dembele, right? That United are interested in signing. And for some reason, as I was reading it, I don't, I don't know what happened, but I said Osama bin, I, like I was going to say Osama bin Laden. I don't know what happened. And at the time, I have to be very honest with you though, at the time, I didn't even realize I had said anything wrong. I, we just carried on. It was so early in the show, we just carried on. And then my phone was next to me and my phone started going off. Like I looked down during the break and I was like, bloody hell, what's going on? Like, why am I getting so many tweets? And then someone had obviously cut it and yeah, that fucker that cut it. Fucking. Uh. Anyway, I owned it, whatever, right? What can you do? You've got to keep on moving. The funny thing is, though, yeah, I'm quite, like, I'm mentally quite strong, like, whatever. Like, I, I can go back and forth with people on social media. I can be um, a dick on social media myself. So I don't mind getting a bit of stick on social media now and again. I give out mine. I can take some. Mate, if I was a bit softer... Because some of the bloody responses to that um, that little clip have been brutal. If I was soft, I mean, that would take me under. But I'm not soft. So we can get through it. We can get through it and uh, we can keep on moving. <sighs> nice. Green tea before we go to bed. All right. Decaffeinated. All right, um, let's just look on boxing scene and see what we can talk about. Uh, Curtis Stevens returns on November 21st in Tampa, Florida. Curtis Stevens, geez. Remember when Curtis Stevens was uh, part of the Chin Checkers with, um, oh, what was it? It was him and Jaden Codrington. Is it Codrington or Corrington? Uh, who was on the Contenders series, got beat by Sakio Beaker. They were the Chin Checkers coming up because they basically just knocked everyone out. Um, obviously, he's no longer what he was. Hasn't been for a while. Still a dangerous fighter, but um, yeah, it's a shame. I was watching a, um, a TV documentary about him recently, and he was going back to the hood and saying hello to everyone and just talking about money and shit like that. Hope he's made some money. I hope um, when it's all said and done, he's made enough to have bought his house and I don't know, bought a car or something. Fingers crossed, right? Um, Tyson Fury fails, sorry, vows to fight in 2020 against Wilder or someone else. Um, I don't know what's going on with this Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury situation. Um, Bob Arum has left a few statements saying the fight is still going on. Um, is it? Is it really happening? We're in October now. <laughs> so there's only three months of the year left. Um, if it were going to happen, this type of fight should happen now. Um, just to give it a bit of a push. I don't think they're going to do, obviously, well, they're not going to do a press tour or anything, but you still want to give it at least a two-month push, right? So I don't know. I don't know. Um, I was in Talk Sport today where Tyson Fury came on, came on the air and was speaking to Simon Jordan and Jim White and Johnny Nelson and Spencer Oliver came in uh, to have that discussion as well. So it was like a little round table between those four. And I heard Tyson Fury on there talking about Anthony Joshua wanting to fight and almost being upset that he has to sit out this long and blah, blah, blah. And then I grabbed Spencer and Johnny Nelson to come on my show. And thank you to those guys. I don't, they're probably not watching this. But if they are, thank you so much for coming on. They didn't have to come on. 
I just literally grabbed them for five minutes and asked if I could quickly get them on my show. Um, they came on and we had a nice chat about Tyson Fury. They both been, they both think so that Anthony Joshua beats Tyson Fury. Um, obviously, they've been accused of being company men. But I do remember speaking to both of them out in Saudi Arabia. And both of them said that Ruiz was going to beat AJ. So you're not really company man if, if you know, if you're saying now that AJ is going to win when you've also um, said AJ is going to lose on other occasions. Um, we also spoke about um, Chisora Usyk. Um, Spencer said that he expects uh, Usyk to stop Chisora late. And they both expect um, Dillian White to get revenge against Povetkin. They both expect so... Yeah, um, but again, thanks to both of them for coming in. That was really good. Just to break it up, because my show, today was a busy show, by the way. We did everything today. But it was nice to get some boxing on the show. That's what I want to do more of. I want to do more boxing, more UFC, more whatever, you know. Um, but yeah, it was nice to get those guys on. Um, Frank Warren says, Jose Ramirez must face Catterall or vacate title, yeah. Catrol is at mandatory for, I don't know what belt it is for Ramirez actually, but he is mandatory. Uh, Josh Taylor has spoken about um, asking Catrol to take step aside money or step aside and then promise Catrol uh, to fight him if he beats Ramirez. That's what I'm hearing. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with this Catrol. Obviously, that's what we want. We want Josh Taylor versus Ramirez. But you can understand Catrol, his dream is to get a world title. His dream is to earn some money. Why is he going to risk stepping aside? It's all well and good Josh Taylor saying, yeah, um, you know, I'll fight you when I beat Ramirez. But what if you don't beat Ramirez? And not only that, but what if you win, then you decide you want to go to 147? So if I'm Catrol, I'm not taking that step aside. I'm, I want my shot. I want my shot of Ramirez. I've worked my way up to a mandatory position. I ain't stepping aside for nobody. In fact, what I would tell Josh Taylor is, let me fight Ramirez. Let me beat Ramirez. Then I'll fight you in an all-British dust-up. You know? I mean, I don't think Catchwell's beating Ramirez, but that's what he should say back. He shouldn't take step aside. I shouldn't at all. Um, Ronnie Shields. Uh, Jamal will fight Canelo at 168, 175, wherever he wants. Jamal and Jamel, to be fair, I think Jamal's just a bit bigger though. Even in height, he just looks a bit bigger. But I think Jamal will comfortably, like, sorry, will be very comfortable at 168. Like, and even 175. And that sounds a bit crazy, but I do believe that. Um, you look at someone like a Hopkins that went up to 175. Hopkins never looked small for 175, did he? Never. I never thought Hopkins was undersized at 175. And I think eventually Jamal might go there. Um, what is he now? 30, 31? Eventually he could go there. In order sometimes, in order to like have like longevity in boxing, you sometimes have to not try and kill yourself making weight. Sometimes if you outgrow a weight, you do need to go up. Uh, you do need to go up. And I, I look at someone like um, Jarrett Hurd, and I think he's killed himself just because he's been trying to make 154. I think he's just killed himself. I think Jared Hurt could be done already. I, I don't know what it takes for him to make 154, but I think you're in the long run, you're just killing your body. So I think a jump for Jamal to 168 is not a problem. I still think he has business at 160, but I don't know, stay at 160 for two, maybe three more fights, then go 168. Stay there for a couple, and then by the time he's 33, 34, and he still wants to fight, go 175. It's a way to... Um, lengthen, length, lengthen out your career. I think people that always stay within one weight class, that's difficult. That is very, very difficult. Unless you're super strict all year round so you don't put on too much weight so you don't have to then cut. But if you're one of them people that have to keep cutting and keep cutting and keep cutting and keep cutting, it's, it's just going to kill you in the long run. It's going to kill you. Oh, this green tea is beautiful. Um, sorry, one second, peeps. Um, okay, uh, what we got here? Uh, Lomachenko, Lopez talks too much. If you insult me, prepare for pain. All right, let's see. Uh, Derek Chisora, Tyson Fury has promised, promised me a third fight. He owes it to me. Um, mm. No, <laughs> no, 
Don't want to see that. Especially not after the second one. The second one was um, the second one was the best Tyson Fury I've ever seen. People will point to Deontay Wilder. People might even point to Vladimir Klitschko. Uh, no, that that Chisora fight, the second one, was the best I've ever seen. He he was spiteful. He was very good. He was it was just really really good Tyson Fury. Um, so I don't necessarily want to see Chisora Fury again. Um, when I say I think what Chisora means by this. It is not that he wants a crack at Tyson Fury knowing he can do something against Tyson Fury. I think he's saying it more of a payday. I, th I genuinely believe that's what he's saying. Like, he knows him fighting Tyson Fury is a big, big money fight for both, right? They're both, it's a good money fight, you know. It's not massive money, don't get me wrong. But uh, Chisora will make seven figures if he, ha if he were to fight Tyson Fury. So I feel, almost feel like he's asking it for a favour. <laughs> That's the only way I can look at it because it's not a competitive fight. It's not. It's not a competitive fight at all. Again, go and watch the second fight. Um, do I think Chisora's got better since then? Don't know. Chisora's a strange one, man. I don't know. I watched him against Take. He was losing like like every single round of that fight. Then just found that punch. Um, and then who's he beat since then? Artur Spilka didn't look great against Gashi and David Price. Is that, the, is that the names? And got beat by Gillian White. You know what I mean? Like, nah. Joshua Boatze expects tough clash with Marco Kalic. It might just be a tough fight, this one. I'm hearing good things about Kalic. Like, I've obviously criticised who he's fought. I've critiqued it. I'm like, oh, he hasn't fought anyone. But people are saying he's a good boxer. Um, I've watched one of his fights on YouTube. He's okay. I just think Joshua Boatze is levels above him, but Boatze has been uh, inactive. Boatze hasn't fought in over a year. It's a long time out of the ring. It's a very long time. Plus, he's pulled out of his fight he was supposed to have in November with injury. So I don't know um, what the situation was. That Obviously, he's healed, whatever, but I don't know what the injury was in order for him to pull out. So, I mean, we'll see, man. We'll see. I expect Boatze, Boatze has to get the job done. It's not I expect. He has to get the job done. He has to look good. He has to destroy him. That's simple. Yeah, it, this can't go five, six rounds. He has to destroy him, then move on and fight and get a December. That's what has to happen. Last bit, peeps. All right, what have we got here now? Pacquiao, I'd only fight McGregor if I'm co-promoter of the event. <sighs> like, I don't, I don't believe anything now. <laughs> That McGregor tweets or says, like, anything. Like, all of a sudden, I, I, just don't, I don't believe any... Honestly, he's one of the people now, I really... I, I think he's... Um, yeah, I'm not going to say that anyway. But, I, yeah, I don't believe anything he tweets. Um, because all of a sudden now, he's tweeting about a charity MMA match with uh, Dustin Poirier for December. I thought he was having a boxing match. I, I don't know what he's doing. Honestly, he's, he's a very... Interesting character. Let's move on. Uh, Gamboa's manager. Fight with Devin Haney will not disappoint. So is this fight done? Because it's not been announced, I don't think. But I'm guessing it's done then. Um, strange. Very, very strange fight. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I'm not joking. Very strange. Devin Haney, uh, WBC lightweight champion, fighting Gamboa, who's coming off a loss and was injured in that fight. Gamboa's done. Gamboa is done. Gamboa will cause Haney some problems. Don't get me wrong. Just because he's still very explosive for a few rounds, has got a good chin. Right? You, you knock him down, he will get up. He just always gets up. But, I mean, Devin Haney's proclaimed himself to be one of the best, if not the best lightweight out there. And again, I've said this before, I'm going to repeat myself. Look at who his peers are fighting. Tifimo is about to take on Loma. Ryan Garcia is about to take on Luke Campbell. Um, Javante Davis, even though I weight below, I believe, is about to take on Leo Santa Cruz. I would have been much happier, even though he's coming off a loss, and it was, it was a while back now, with a Richard Comey. I don't know. I just feel like I would have been more happy with that. Because um, Richard Comey got knocked out by a Tiafima. It's not like he got bust up for 12 rounds. He just got knocked out. Just, just hap It happens. He's fine. I would have preferred to have seen that fight, if I'm honest with you. Um... 
Andy Ruiz, here we go, says ring return pushed to 2021, training with Reynoso. Um, all right, so he's going to be out of the ring for over a year. Um, again, there's no excuses anymore. Everyone's come back. I don't want to hear about coronavirus, COVID, pandemic. Everyone is coming back. Literally everyone. So there, there's no excuses. So um, his ring return being pushed to 2021 is a bit of, bit of bullshit. This is crap. Wasn't he supposed to fight Ariola? Like, what happened with that? What happened with Andy Ruiz Ariola? Where was it? I remember. I honestly have completely forgot about this. What happened with that fight? Yeah, they're supposed to fight late 2020. What's happened? I don't even know. I have no idea what happened with that fight. I'm sure it was a done deal. And now we're saying pushed to 2021. No idea. No idea. Um, uh, Javante Davis, who we just spoke about, Santa Cruz, moves to October the 31st in San Antonio with fans in attendance. Interesting. How many fans? How many fans? 25% seating. Sorry. I don't know how big this venue is. It's the home of Texas Rangers. Um, mate, it might be... Sorry, one second, people. Sorry. There might be quite a lot of fans, you know. Interesting. But anyway, look, that's good. That fight's on. We're happy, right? We're happy to see Javante Davis, Santa Cruz. Um, Santa Cruz... We'll see. We'll see what happens to that fight. I, I don't, Santa Cruz is solid, isn't he? But Javante Davis is so explosive. But Santa Cruz is such a good boxer, technically. Very smart. Very, very sharp with what he does. Be interesting to see. I'm, I'm happy that um, the fight's at 130, I believe. Not 135. 135. Javante eats in 130. Javante having to come down and wait. Interesting. I just feel like Javante's going to not make the weight and he's going to come in heavy and not give a fuck. Not give a fuck. And the fight's still going to happen just because... Javante Davis, right? So you guys watched a Ahara Davis, Tara McKenna fight. My God, what a snooze fest. What a snooze fest. All, for all the hype. Remember that they, they tried to just, I think it was fake hype anyway. They tried to pretend there was a little fight. I remember at the back of York Hall, Beth and the Green. For all that, that fight was dead, man. Dead. I'm so happy it wasn't a draw because they might have done it again. But congratulations to Ahara Davis. Um, golden contract winner. Um, let's see if we can kick on now. Let's see if we can kick on and see what he can do. Um, just to confirm that Devin Haney, Gamboa, that fight is for the 7th of November. That's what we're hearing. Um, two seconds. Oh, this is interesting. Daniel Jacobs and uh, Rosado, Gabriel Rosado, have reached an agreement to fight November 27th. Where has that come from? Where has that come from? Rosado is such an interesting character because Rosado, you know, Rosado is a bit like Chisora. In the sense that he always gets big fights, like has lost so many. Rosado must have lost about 11. Let me quickly bring up his box rec. Twelve. <laughs> lost twelve. So Rosado is 25 and 12. That's an impact. Well, not snow. That's a bad record for someone that is is as good as he is. Like Rosado's a good fighter, I think. 20, 20, 25 and 12. But I can't lie to you. There are some of these fights where I thought he actually won. I can't lie. There's a couple that I thought he won and didn't get the decision. But 25 and 12, but he's still getting them. So he is our Derek Chisora, no doubt about that. That's an um, interesting little scrap, you know. Interesting little scrap. And I'm guessing it's going to be 168 pounds. They've had their words. These two have been going back and forth for years. So both of them are going to bring it. And look, Rosado brings it, you know. Rosado brings it. Rosado is such a good gatekeeper at either weight class. Um, Danny Jacobs should beat him, should get the job done. But hey, I don't know, man. Rosado, Rosado is solid. Rosado is solid. 25 and 12, you know. Mad. Mad. Sorry, people. I'm just waiting for a message to come through on this phone. <laughs> Apologies. Um, as it does that. Let me quickly continue. Uh, Mikey Garcia, Manny Pacquiao fighting me next, 100%, not Conor McGregor. Um, wouldn't shock me that. Wouldn't shock me, considering what I've just said about Conor McGregor and not believing a word he says 
Although I was told Conor McGregor was fighting Manny Pacquiao, but I don't know, man. I don't know any like with Conor McGregor. I, I have no idea. Um, and let's be honest, I would rather see Mikey versus Pac-Man anyway. To be honest, I think that's a good fight. Um, let's see, eh? Let's see what happens. Um, Joshua Fury went pro in two thousand and eight. Never thought I'd catch up to him. Um, yeah, it's quite interesting. I remember seeing that round table. I think it was Lennox Lewis, Frank Bruno. I can't remember who else was there. Apologies. Tyson Fury, AJ. And there was another guy that was there. And um, I think AJ had just come out of the Olympics and Tyson Fury was there. And I guess you don't expect to eventually catch up to them. You don't, right? You look at them and in awe to an extent. But he has caught up to him. And again, let's hope. Let's hope it's the fight we get. Don't know. Don't know about this sport, man. Who knows? Uh, this is interesting, and we'll end on this. Um, two sex peeps. Two seconds. Okay, uh, we'll end on this one. Uh, Canelo Alvarez refiles breach of contract uh, suit against the zone golden boy De La Hoya. What is going on here? Like, really, what has happened? I can, I wouldn't be shocked if we get another Andre Ward situation, Mikey Garcia, where they go through legal, legal, legals, and they don't fight for like two, three years. And that would shock me if Canelo were to do that. And um, maybe he's got a strong stance on this. Maybe you know we heard about um, uh, and like a ten-hour meeting between everyone. Maybe nothing was sorted. Maybe Canelo feels, you know what, no. I'm going to stick to my guns on this one. Um, you guys are offering me 35 million or whatever it was to fight. There was no, um, nothing that said I had to fight A, B, C or D, right? You told me to fight and you'll pay me this amount and now you're trying to pick the opponents. I don't know. I, don't, I, I need to read what this is all about. I feel like there's more into it than that. Um, I feel like he might be suing Golden Boy and in turn then suing DAZN. I have no idea. But I do find it interesting just because um, just because of that 10-hour meeting that Mike Coppin just said they had. Anyway, it's getting late. Um, I don't know what this video is about, but hopefully you enjoyed it. <laughs> Peace.